from audible and visible can i get a quick thumbs up from each and every one of you so you can hear me i'll uh, get to know that you are you are all able to hear me properly can i get a quick thumbs up from all of you very nice so welcome everyone i'm dr cheshta agarwal your neat pt educator on the best online platform that is an academy now uh, on an academy we do have a lot of free live sessions quizzes test series uh, this is the list of few of them so for this uh, month we have a very interesting sessions uh, awaited for all of you so starting from uh, the 25th april to 30th april we have a lot of free live classes or the quizzes you can use my code cheshta10 and get yourself enrolled to any of them we have all india neat pg mock test 2022 Uh, that is scheduled for May first at 9 a.m. This is a free live test, but you need to get enrolled. And again, you can use my code for the same. Cheshta10 is my code. Now, on the special request, an academy have relaunched the 20% discount, uh, keeping in mind the target that all the students should achieve their goal, and that is why we have made our subscription discounts of 20%. So if you use our code. That is C H E S T A ten. Instead of ten percent discount, you will avail twenty percent discount, and this offer is valid for twenty fifth, twenty sixth, twenty seventh, and twenty eighth. I would be requesting all my dear students to kindly get yourself enrolled for this amazing twenty uh, percent discount. We have four types of subscriptions plus iconic, light, and MBBS subscription. Whatever you choose, use my code to avail twenty percent discount. so you will get this discount when you have when you use this referral code this is something which we have recently launched keeping in mind the increasing students in the mbbs and uh, the need of uh, pre pg preparation starting from first prof we have launched this batch please use my code i think now you know it cheshta10 c h e s t a 10 an academy light subscription is specifically dedicated for this time that is one month before the exam you need to have the access to the practice test of an academy so please get yourself enrolled plus is actually the access to the an academy platform all the live classes from the top educators and iconic give you an access to both an academy and prep ladder it's like a mixture of both we have a pyq bank you can easily access that how you can do this these steps are here so please follow these steps we are also having the auto dpp now that at the end of your plus class you can simply practice whatever you have read in that class we have free live classes i do take free live sessions every day on the platform requesting you to please be live we have an fmg batch high yield mcq batch which will start from 27th of this month requesting all of you to kindly get yourself enrolled same code will be applied here also which is chase start pen let's start with the first question we have a long lengthy questions so please answer this question very very important for your exam a 38 year old woman please tell me the answer comes to the physician because of a one month history of painless non prurytic skin lesions she initially thought it was an insect bite but it has slowly increased in size over the past week her temperature is 36.7 degree centigrade pulse is 75 per minute The blood pressure is 128 by 76 mm hg. Physical examination shows 0.8 cm hyperpigmented papule. When the skin lesion is squeezed, the surface retracts to inwards. The photograph of the lesion is shown. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Anybody can tell me the correct answer for this question. What is the most likely diagnosis for this particular lesion? Smiley and the other students. Now here we have a very interesting image, and this is an image of a sign which is called as dimple sign, or Fitzpatrick sign. Dimple sign is a very very characteristic feature of dermato fibroma, which is nothing but benign proliferations of fibroblast. Now when there is benign proliferations of fibroblast, there is teethering of the skin epidermis to the dermis. and whenever you pinch the lesion the teethered part depressed in or it goes inside this is a very classical this is a very classical dimple sign or fitz patrick sign i hope this is clear to all of you can i get a quick thumbs up from all my dear students a dimple sign or a fitz patrick sign dimple sign or a fitz patrick sign 
image based question the second image or second question of the today's session a female with hyperpigmented patches hairs on the lower body since birth what can be the diagnosis ashish shagufta smiley ashwini and all the other students we have a lot of students live very nice what is the answer congenital melanocytic nevus verrucous epidermal nevus lentigen or melanoacanthoma let me show you the image this is the hyperpigmented area which is present since birth and there is a lot of hairs which is seen over this part so hyperpigmented lesions with lot of hair very classical example of giant congenital melanocytic nevus when it is more than 20 cm you call it giant it is associated with increased hair so hypertrichosis is associated and third very very important point which you all need to know here is that in addition to both of them please remember they are pre malignant so you should always look at them with suspicion if there is sudden increase uh, in the size the color border always do a uh, excision biopsy because it can convert into malignant melanoma so please remember this point very very important for your exam the next question is on your computer screen a 28 year old woman comes to the physician because of a two month history of right infra mammary lump there are tender have a foul smelling odor she has had previous episodes of painful swellings in the axilla 12 month ago that resolved with antibiotic therapy leaving some scarring examination of the right inframemory fold shows multiple tender erythematous nodules and fistula with purulent discharge hirsutism is present her fasting glucose concentration is 136 um, mg per deciliter what is the correct answer which of the following areas are most likely to be affected by this patient's condition so uh, it's very clear at my end smiley if there is it is not clear at your end please check your internet collection because uh, it is very very clear when i see it from my mobile so and i think it is clear for everyone also okay so those who are not able to see the video clearly please check your internet connection sometime if the internet is poor at your end you might see some delay in the audio video or some blur it blur in the image okay yes okay fine now this is a very important question can anybody tell me what is the diagnosis here can you tell me what can be the diagnosis what can be the diagnosis here it's a patient with a disease known as hydradenitis hydradenitis suppurativa it's a disease called as hydradenitis suppurativa now it is a disease of apocrine gland where you have obstruction of the apocrine gland duct as well as hair follicle it classically presents at the sites of apocrine glands like axilla areola groin and even buttock how does it present in these individual you will always get a complaint of folliculitis or some inflamed papules which slowly converts into nodule very painful soon the patient develops sinus tracts through which the discharge comes out and then there will be healing with fibrosis ultimately the patient will have multiple comedones and because of its exact reverse course starting from nodule and ending into comedone sometimes this condition is also known as acne inversa but please remember this is a misnomer we are not using this term anymore the correct answer of this question becomes option number 3 that is groin am i audible and visible to all of you can i get a quick thumbs up from each and every one very easy very simple and a very interesting question moving to the next image be it eczema which can lead to this conditions are all except eczemas which can lead to these conditions are all except please remember if you like these questions which i am discussing we have a lot more on the anacademy app so please download the app today and use this code to get 10% discount right now for 3 days till 28 we are actually going for 20% discount so please don't miss this opportunity to avail anacademy discounts at 20% okay so very nice ashish yash smiley this is a patient look at this image uh, let me show you the image first this is a image of a patient with generalized erythema scaling and exfoliation 
This is a condition called as exfoliative dermatitis. This is a condition which is known as exfoliative dermatitis. Now question is eczemas which can lead to exfoliative dermatitis is all except. Please remember atopic dermatitis, seborrheic dermatitis, phytophotodermatitis all of them can lead to exfoliative dermatitis but pneumular eczema will never lead to such severe form of eczemas. It will have a very discrete lesions mainly on the extremities. It will never convert into exfoliative sort of dermatitis. Can I get a quick thumbs up from all my dear students if this is clear? All of you, Yash, Ashish, Smiley. I hope this point is clear. So this is a very interesting question from exfoliative dermatitis where more than 90% of the body surface area is involved. Next question is on your screen. A 35 year old woman comes to the emergency department because of one day history of fever, malaise, sore throat, oral ulcers and sensitivity to the light. Now she had a urinary tract infection two weeks ago that was treated by cotrimoxazole. Physical examination reveals injected conjunctiva, purulent discharge. Okay. Then we have oral pelvic examination which shows erythema of the mucous membrane. Examination of the skin shows vesicles, erythematous macule with purpuric center and when the skin is slightly stroked, the superficial layer of the adjacent skin separate. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis for this particular patient's condition? Robin, Dhruv, Yash, Ashish, Smiley, Ashwini, Shagufta. Anybody can tell me the correct answer for this question. What does the question tells you that a patient because of urinary tract infection consumed a drug following which he started developing the lesions in the mucosa as well as on the skin and on stroking these lesions there is clear cut separation it means Nikolsky sign is positive it's a very very classical feature of toxic epidermal necrolysis toxic epidermal necrolysis which is a severe form of drug rash it classically presents with mucosal involvement. The skin exfoliation is seen in more than 30% of the body surface areas. And the commonest drugs are the sulfur group of drugs like cotrimoxazole. The other drugs are anti-epileptics. Even ART can cause, specifically the nevirapine can cause this type of toxic epidermal necrolysis. So everybody is right. The correct answer of this question is option number 3. Next question. A previously healthy 30 year old male, please tell me the correct answer of this question. A previously healthy 30 year old man comes to the physician because of a two week history of skin lesions on his elbow back. He has no history of serious illness. He takes no medication. Physical examination shows lesions on the bilateral elbow, back and scalp. Photograph is shown which of the following is the most appropriate treatment for the patient's condition. Can you tell me what can be the diagnosis? Tell me what is the diagnosis here first. The image is, is in front of you. Image is in front of you. Tell me the diagnosis. If you know the diagnosis, you will definitely give me the correct answer. Ashish, Shreya, Yash, Megha, Robin, Ashwini. Please tell me the correct answer. And before that, tell me the diagnosis. It is not a tinea. Please remember, it is not a tinea infection. Look at this. You can see that there is a plaque with a very classical thick silvery scales. And this is not scalp. I don't know. I think this image is not clear. This is the flank, the trunk of a patient. Can you see this is the lungi, which is tied here? Okay. Please remember, this is a very classical psoriasis plaque. The erythematous plaque with thick silvery scales over it and if it is psoriasis there is no point of giving ketoconazole. The only option which can be used in treating this patient is calcipotriol which is a vitamin D analog we use very very frequently in the patients of psoriasis. Okay. I hope this point is clear. Please remember, please remember this is very very important that you have to identify the lesion. Tinea is an annular lesion with clearing at the center and 
spread in the periphery but this is a lesion with a plaque uniformly having erythema and silvery white scales okay so i hope this question is clear very very easy and interesting now let's move to the next question a very interesting one okay before that i want all of you to please solve this question identify this type of physical urticaria dermographism urticaria pigmentosa urticarial vasculitis or autoimmune urticaria identify this physical urticaria very nice if you look at the back patient gives a history that whenever he itches his back there are lines on the mark of itching right this is a very classical physical urticaria which is known as dermographism and please remember this is the most common type of physical urticaria this is the most common type of physical urticaria urticaria pigmentosa it's a different condition it is nothing but a cutaneous mastocytosis Urticaria vasculitis it's a form of vasculitis while autoimmune urticaria is seen secondary to the autoantibody specifically of IgE type let's move to the next question i think this was a easy one not a very difficult question next question a 24 year old man comes to the physician for evaluation of a severely pruritic skin rash so very itchy rash physical examination shows symmetrical rash over the knees elbow with tense grooved vesicles and several excoriated mark the microabscess in the papillary dermis are seen on the light microscopy immunofluorescence shows deposits of iga immunoglobulins at the dermoepidermal junction specifically over the dermal papilla what is the most likely association of this patient's condition i think it's a very easy question it's a very easy question this is a patient of can you tell me what is the diagnosis here what is the diagnosis this is a patient with dermatitis herpetiformis why this dermatitis herpetiformis because you have grooved vesicles which are tense and it is associated with intense itching all these features give you an idea that you are dealing with dermatitis herpetiformis and please remember around or almost 90% of the patients of dh have an underlying gluten sensitive enteropathy they can have a manifest disease or they can even have an ocular disease which is diagnosed for the first time but they do have gliadin dependent hypersensitivity or gluten sensitive enteropathy i hope this is clear let's move to the next question the next question is on your screen a 54 year old woman comes to the physician because of a painful skin rash on her leg for one month it initially started out as a small red spot but has rapidly increased in size during this period she has crohn's disease examination shows pitting pedal edema of the lower extremities there is a 4 cm tender ulcerative lesion on the anterior side of the leg with central necrotic base and a purplish irregular border femoral and pedal pulses are palpable bilaterally which of the following is the most likely diagnosis very nice ashwini kostub sonali very well done all my dear students very nice i think you all have understood this this is a very easy question a rapidly progressing ulcers uh, on the lower extremities in a patient with underlying inflammatory bowel disease very very classical pyoderma gangrenosum which is a neutrophilic dermatosis it's a neutrophilic dermatosis which presents with rapidly progressing painful ulcer please remember that it do not respond to sterile conditions or antibiotic you need to give steroids or dapsone to take care of these lesions and they usually heals with a very classical cribriform scarring so please remember pyoderma gangrenosum is the answer next question 
A 16-year-old boy comes to the physician because of a painful lesion on the sole of his right foot for one month. It becomes progressively larger, more painful, making it difficult for him to walk. He does not have any personal or family history of serious illness. An examination shows one centimeter lesion on the sole of the foot. The remainder of the examination is unremarkable and the photograph is attached. Which of the following is the most likely lesion? Shagufta, Ashish, Mega, Yash, Ashwini, very very nice all of you. The correct answer of this question is, it's a very classical plantar wart, which occurs because of HPV1. It looks very similar to that of corn, but the points which differentiate a plantar wart from a corn is, if you see these black dots, these are nothing but necrosed blood vessel. Presence of necrosed blood vessel in the lesion is a very classical feature of human papilloma viral infection, and the strain of HPV which causes the plantar wart is HPV1. I hope this question is clear and there is no doubt with this. Can I get a very quick thumbs up from all my dear students? Okay. The next question is here on your screen. Very nice all of you, very very nice. I think this is an easy question. Yes. Now if you look at this question, the question gives you a history that there is a 48 year old man who comes with a history of hypopigmented skin lesions on the finger. So first mark this one. He noticed these lesions 4 weeks ago after cutting his finger with a knife while preparing food. He did not feel any cut. It means there is loss of sensation. The temperature of the patient is raised. It is 101.7 degree Fahrenheit. And physical examination shows a small healing laceration on the left finger which is overlying a well-defined hypopigmented macule with the raised border. Sensation was decreased and all these features gives you an idea that you are dealing with a patient with leprosy which is the infection secondary to mycobacterium leprae. So what are the points which help us differentiate it from the other uh, four or three options? The presence of loss of sensation which is one of the very frequent finding in the patient of M. lebre infection. Please remember the most common site of affection of M. lebre is the skin plus the peripheral nerves. And that is why these individuals usually present with the loss of sensation early in their course. The next question is on your screen a 10 year old boy with a painful bogey swelling of the scalp. Multiple sinuses with purulent discharge, easily pluckability of hair, which, will, which is the correct answer here. What diagnostic evaluation or what procedure you will use to make a diagnosis in this patient? Very nice, Kostu. Very nice, Shagufta, Yash, Ashwini, Mega, Smiley, Anthony. Very nice. The correct answer is this is a patient with Kirion, and obviously, if it is Kirion, you have to do a KOH mount. If it is a Kirion, you have to do a KOH mount. Next question, a pure image based question. We have already come across this question in the past. Please tell me the answer. Very nice. Mega, Smiley, Yash, Kostu, Vashish. A 35 year old male who developed purple red oval macules after taking metronidazole. There is a history of similar lesions in the same site 6 months back. What is your diagnosis? Iridema multiforme, urticaria, annular LP or fixed drug eruption. Please, please remember the correct answer is FDE. Remember this type of lesion whenever you see. When a patient takes a drug, there is sudden pain and redness on the lesions and whenever patient improves, there is a classical hyperpigmentation of this area. This is how a patient of fixed drug eruption presents. Okay, so please remember this. These are the very important points which you have to remember for our question. The next question is on your screen. 
A patient presented with a rash of more than 30% skin with hemorrhagic crest on the lip. The cause would be drug, virus, malignancy or bacterial infection. You can see the image. We have three images of this child. You can see that on the trunk, on the lower extremities, even on the upper extremities, face and chest, there are multiple targetoid lesions. In addition, you can see a lot of crust on the lips. There is also a history of lesions on the genitals. What can be the correct answer? Very nice. Shagufta, Ashish, Ashwini, Akhil, RR, Yash. This is a very classical example of toxic epidermal necrolysis. Please remember, it's a very classical example of toxic epidermal necrolysis. And we have already discussed that when more than 90, uh, more than 30 percent of the body surface area is involved, uh, and in association with that, if there is involvement of the mucosa, think about the toxic epidermal necrolysis. Next question is on your screen. Kaposi variliform eruption is what is Kaposi variliform eruption? Varicella like grouped vesicles in Kaposi sarcoma. Infection with herpes virus in the patient with atopic dermatitis which may result in the spread of herpes simplex throughout the eczematous areas. Infection with HHV8 resulting in cutaneous exanthem distributed centripetally. Maculopapular rash due to cutaneous hypersensitivity following Kaposi sarcoma virus. What is the correct answer here? Very nice, Kostup. Uh, Nisar, Ashish, I want everybody to please read at the question very very carefully. They, they are not asking you to make the diagnosis. They have already given the diagnosis of this image. But they are asking you what is this Kaposi variliform eruption. Do we have any alternate name? Do we have any alternate name for Kaposi variliform eruption? The answer is it is also known as eczema herpeticum. It is also known as eczema herpeticum. Please remember this point. Also known as eczema herpeticum. Now, whenever the herpes lesions occurs on the site of eczema, for example, in atopic dermatitis patients, you will see that there is a widespread herpes infection. It occurs over all the sites of eczema. This is known as eczema herpeticum or Kaposi variliform eruption. It has nothing to do with HHV8 or Kaposi sarcoma. No, it is a misnomer. It is infection of the herpes, uh, herpes in a patient with atopic dermatitis. Clear? Can I get a quick thumbs up from all of you? Very easy one, I guess. Take care. Done. Chal. Let's move to the next question. It's on your screen. A man has a non-tender ulcer on genitals with no inguinal lymphadenopathy. What is the diagnosis? What is the correct answer here, anyone? Very nice. Now, the question itself suggests that we have a non-tender ulcer. Please remember, a non-tender hard ulcer. There are two DDs of painless hard ulcer in STD. The one of them is syphilis and what is the another one? Anyone can tell me another example. Donovanosis. Please remember only these two conditions will have a painless hard ulcer. You don't have donovanosis here. Plus donovanosis the ulcer looks very different. It is a ulcer with red granulation tissue uh, which has uh, exuberant appearance which bleeds on touch. But in syphilis, it's like a button, a very bland ulcer without any features of bleeding or touching it. So this is a very classical syphilis ulcer. Please remember this important question. Moving to the next part. Moving to the next part. Patient was treated with steroids for psoriasis. On stopping the treatment, he develops fever, malaise. The lesions are seen in the image below. What is the most probable diagnosis? What is the most probable diagnosis? Anyone?
स्टेफालोकोकल इन्फेक्शन फॉलिक्यूलाइटिस सबकॉर्नियल पस्टूलर डॉमेटोसिस और एक्यूट जनरलाइज पस्टूलर सोराइसिस वेरी नाइस सुजीत अभि अश्विनी अखिल डॉक्टर विक्रम यश The correct answer of this question is acute generalized pustular psoriasis. Now we do not give oral steroids in a patient of psoriasis. Never, never ever give oral steroids in a patient of psoriasis. The problem occurs when you withdraw the steroids. What happens when you withdraw the steroids? The chronic plaque psoriasis converts into one is called as erythrodermic psoriasis. where there is generalized erythema scaling exfoliation or it can even get converted into what is called as pustular form now if you look at this image instead of chronic plaque or instead of plaque you will see a lot of pustules can you see this white white dots all of them are pustules at few places they are discrete they are separate from each other but at another places they become confluent to form large lake of pus ठीक है एंड दिस लेक ऑफ पस विल देन कॉज एक्सफोलिएशन ऑफ स्किन कॉजिंग द ब्लैंड एरियाज लाइक दिस प्लीज रिमेंबर नेवर गिव ओरल स्टीरोइड्स इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ सोराइसिस यू कैन गिव टॉपिकल स्टीरोइड्स बट ओरल स्टीरोइड्स आर कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेटेड बिकॉज इट कैन पुश द पेशेंट टू आइदर द पस्टूलर फॉर्म ऑफ सोराइसिस और इरिथ्रोडर्मिक टाइप ऑफ सोराइसिस द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज ऑन योर स्क्रीन ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव ईयर ओल्ड मेल विथ इची पैप्यूल्स ऑन फेस नेक V area of the chest for the last three years, which are exacerb exacerbated in the summer, improves in the winter. What test will you do to confirm your diagnosis? What test will you do to confirm your diagnosis? Anyone? What test will you do to confirm your diagnosis? anybody can tell me the correct answer here very nice now if you look at this image this is a very classical image of chronic actinic dermatosis what is this chronic actinic dermatosis actinic means sun so it's a type of photodermatitis and if you all remember photodermatitis belongs to a broad category of exogenous eczemas an exogenous eczema is actually a variant of allergic contact dermatitis yes i hope this is clear so in this the sunlight causes the damage to the skin and please remember the investigation of choice for allergic contact dermatitis is always a patch test the investigation of choice for allergic contact dermatitis is a patch test in this particular case we will do what is called as a photo patch test we will apply the sunlight to the patch so that uh, you can have an exact uh, replica of the situation which is happening in this patient a next image based question is on your screen identify this condition cutaneous larva migraine slimes disease dermographism and erythema gyratum repens i can show you the image this is the image there is a problem here so tell me what is the diagnosis what is the correct answer of this question अश्विनी यश लावण्या अर्पिता अखिल आयडेंटिफाय दिस कंडिशन क्यूटेनियस लार्वा माइग्रेन्स लाइम्स डिजीज डेमोग्राफिजम और इरिदिमा गायरेटम रिपेन्स वेरी नाइस द करेक्ट आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन नंबर वन इट्स अ वेरी क्लासिकल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ cutaneous larva migrants you can see the s shaped lesion here the larva migrate and during the migration it causes intense itching so the only complaint with which a patient comes to you is the intense itching which is associated with this lesion in which form of candida satellite lesions are classically seen we have a image attached can you help me out with the correct answer in which of the following uh, condition you will see satellite lesions very classically there is a image also attached here so i hope this will help you out there's a image attached and i'm sure that this will help you out for with the diagnosis
In which form of Canada a satellite lesion is classically seen? In which form of Canada a satellite lesion is classically seen? Anyone? Very nice. Please remember the correct answer of this question is intertrigo. In candle and intertrigo, you see a very classical satellite lesions which are nothing but small lesions at a distant from the main plaque. Small lesions at a distant from a main plaque. Six-year-old child with these lesions associated with itching. What can be the diagnosis here? What can be the diagnosis in this case? Anyone? Very nice. It is a patient with tinea capitis. You can see that in a pre-pubertal age group, there are multiple pus filled lesions which are present on the scalp and that is how a very classical tinea capitis uh, specifically the kirion variety presents so this is a very classical kirion variety the next question is on your computer screen can you tell me the answer here can you tell me the answer in this question a 30 year old male patient uh, sorry female patient presented with annular plaque with the central crusting if you remember the mnemonic, I have told you that there are three DDs of an annular plaque. Annular plaque with central clearing is tinea, with central atrophy is lupus vulgaris, and central crusting is what? So that is the question all about. The lesion with central crusting is a very, very classical feature of cutaneous leishmaniasis, and this is a very classical ulcer which is known as volcano ulcer. It's a very classical ulcer which is known as a volcano ulcer. Let's move to the next question. Let's move to the next question. Tell me what is the correct answer here. Tell me what is the correct answer here. Anyone? What is the correct answer here? Very nice. I think you all have understood this question. Now again the same thing have happened. A patient who was having a chronic skin disease, he was given an injectable by a quack and following which patients develop erythroderma throughout the body. So that dermatological condition could be psoriasis that is a chronic plaque psoriasis and when you give injectable which is most frequently steroids injectable steroids given by quack the disease suddenly got aggravated so this becomes a classical case of erythrodermic type of psoriasis i hope this is clear yash rr ashwini then we have uh, akhil gk megha everyone next question just a second yes so this question we have already asked. I think I want to ask this question. Identify this instrument. I hope you can see this instrument. Skin biopsy punch. I hope I am not coming in mid. I have to move this. Yes. Just have a look. Identify this instrument. Skin biopsy punch, molluscum curate, comedon extractor or a nail elevator. Very classical. Please remember, this is a comedon extractor. I want you to focus on a very important part that is here. Can you see? It has a cup-like structure with a central depression. It has a cup-like structure with central depression at one end and another end it is very very pointed. Now how it helps in removal of comedone? Please remember we have two types of comedone. One is closed and another is open. In open comedone, we have a small crust at the opening and inside this, inside both of them, we have a lot of sebum which is filled. Now what we do, this cup shaped area which is present here, we will just put this cup here like this. If this is the instrument, we will put it like this and we will press it down. When we will press it down, this will come out. 
so that is how you use this cup end for removing the open comedon but for closed comedon even if you put a cup the material will not come out so what you will do you will make a small hole with the help of this pointed part so we have made a small hole and now i am putting this cup i am pressing it downward and that is why the material comes out did you understand or not dr shayad akhil new medico ashwini arpita smiley yash vikram girish all my dear students i hope this is a very simple and easy thing for all of you to understand theek hai clear hai chalo so this is a very classical comedon extractor which we use to remove the comedons from the skin now i think we are almost done with today's session can you all give me a quick thumbs up so let's stop our session here itself we will be meeting tomorrow at the same time that is 2:30 pm we have few more sessions which is awaited for you for the next few days so i would be requesting all my dear students to please kindly subscribe this youtube channel that is uh, uh, an academy life you can also follow us on our telegram group the name is same an academy life you can also use my code cheshta10 please get 20% discount with the help of this code the offer is only valid till 28th of this month don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get all the notification of my classes give a thumbs up to this video and please write on the comment section if you want to have any improvement so thank you